Hi, this is Mariah Gullo from The Hollywood Reporter, and we're in studio today with James Brolin. Hi, James. Hi, hi Mariah. How are you? Oh, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah? Yeah, you asked me what I was going to do this weekend. I'm not sure, but I get to see uh, Josh's movie, uh, Deadpool 2, you know, so that's good. That'll fill the weekend. You must be immensely proud I of am. your son, Josh Brolin, right now. <laughs> for a guy that said, I would never go into your business for anything. He's doing pretty good. <laughs> He's killing it. <laughs> I mean, it, t it took him a while to get around to the idea, I bet. Oh, no, no. Actually, it was it was not too long after that when he said, uh, listen, Pop, I got, uh, this is the last year in high school, right? Mm -hmm. He says, I got a, a three elective possible. I got to take this other class. There's wood shop. I said, oh, I love wood shop. And there's a metal shop. I said, oh, I made some great copper bowls. and Or there's this acting class. And... I said, well, it'll teach you why you get into fights with other people. It'll, it'll give you an ability <laughs> to put yourself in other people's shoes. Right. And uh, next thing I know, he's in the acting class. And, yeah. you know, here we are and there years you go. later. <laughs> yeah. What is he proud of you for? Oh, that's a good question. We just get along so good. I, th I think, you know, he grew up and he was born into, by the time, let's see, he was two years old. Um, yeah, I was in a hit series. We were number mm -hmm. one on the air. Yeah. In Welby. Yeah. You know? And so I, I, that's a hard thing to answer because that was what he, he grew up with. He it. grew up in. Yeah. 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 And that's exactly why he said, I would never go into your business because I think when he was young, he got picked on at school and mm -hmm. challenged, you know, mm -hmm. like. Why, you know, I'm, Stallone is a good example. He can't go into a bar if somebody tries to choo choose him off. <laughs> <You> <laughs> yeah, know? that's true. Yeah. yeah. What about your directing career? You started directing pretty early at the yeah, same time. Yeah, actually, I called myself a director. I, I had a dark room when I was 10 doing stills, and at 15 mm -hmm. I discovered the movie camera, basically because my dad had a 16-millimeter movie camera mm -hmm. and shot a lot of stuff. And so I had... Um, the confidence to buy a, a straight eight. And uh, I always worked from the time I was 14, so um, so I bought this and I started shooting film with this fantasy that I love to go to the movies. Mm -hmm. And in those days, we were totally fascinated with the biggest screen possible, you know, which let's say the Fox uh, Village in Westwood is really an ample screen. There were a lot of those. So that influenced me to see a Western in, in, in uh, 120 feet wide, you know, mm -hmm. made me want to do this even more, you know. And, um, and yet, bef previous to that, I, I really had thought that films came out of golden eggs, you know, that <laughs> uh, they were from heaven or something. Yeah. But, and then when I found out that it was like a construction job, and my dad was a contractor, mm -hmm. So I said, oh, look, there's a guy painting a sign that goes up on the saloon, and there's a guy sawing wood, and they got 10 minutes before they got to be ready, and everybody's running late. It's the same thing. So <laughs> yeah. anyway, I had to answer your question, I had it in my head to um, direct and make films. And then when I was 18, somebody pushed me in front of the camera, which I was very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. In fact, I said, I don't have to talk in this job. And they said, no, no, you just drive this Dodge truck and look like a young cowboy, and uh, and that's all. So they came back, and they hired me for another one. And then an agent came in and put me in a Gallo wine commercial as a young prince mm -hmm. uh, eating food at a table with, you know, turkey drumsticks and things. <laughs> Still didn't have to talk, right? <laughs> So, you know, by then, um, by force, I had my Screen Actors Guild card. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, well, but I want to direct. And everybody now is saying, oh, no, no, we've got some interviews for you in front of the camera. And I, I, went, I started saying, look, if I want to stay in this game, I better go to school. So I had workshop every night of the week. I'm, yeah. I mean, seven nights a week I was either rehearsing or on stage um, humiliating myself. <laughs> And, you know, it's like anything. Uh, it gets easier the more you do it. Yeah. <laughs> and there's always anticipation. The nervousness is what gives it life to me mm -hmm. now. Yeah. And I know that no matter every time in those days or all the way up to if I'm in an uncomfortable situation today, 
you find out you lived through it. Yeah. You know, you weren't dead at the end of the day, so probably won't be dead tomorrow. Mm-hmm. It gets That's easier deduction. and easier. <laughs> <laughs> Um, So I wanted to play a little game with you because I know that you're a bit of a driving enthusiast. Yeah. And I wanted to tell you um, some of your career highlights and then ask you what you were driving at the time. Ooh, that's interesting. Ready for this? I wish I had more photos of those cars. I know. Or some. (laughs) Some of those I don't have any picture of, but, uh, you know. Yeah. I got to go into Google. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Okay, the year is 1965. You taught Patty Duke about forest conservation on an episode of the Patty Duke Show. What were you driving? In 65, of all things, I went real Hollywood, and I bought myself a 55 Cadillac convertible. Because I saw Marilyn Monroe in one on the 20th lot. <laughs> yes. And I said, now that's the kind of car that a movie star should drive. So that's I figured it's the only way I'm going to become a movie star is by that car. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> that's perfect. But Act dur- as if. Yeah, during those years. I, actually, the first car I ever bought was, I bought a Model A Ford with no engine in it when I was 15. <laughs> and I, I figured I'd get an engine. And then I bought one that actually had an engine in it. And then my first... A uh, real good car was a three-year-old Thunderbird, which I rebuilt the engine out of a wow. book. Wow. Yeah, and uh, so I was, you know, always obviously interested in cars. I was interested in the way cameras worked. Yeah. I was interested in gears and the way yeah. things. Yeah, and I was especially uh, in the entertainment area. I was especially interested in the mechanics of that movies are nothing but a bunch of still pictures all glued together, and when you run them past you, they move. It's like flipping through a book. It's pretty you know? amazing. Yeah, yeah, it is amazing. <laughs> so the mechanics of things always um, excited me, and what really then excited me more was that you could make somebody cry with these mechanics or laugh, yeah. you know? Yeah. Pretty cool. All right, here's another one. The year is 1973. You play mm-hmm. Chuck Brenner, a divorcee who becomes stuck in a shopping mall fighting off rabid Dobermans mm-hmm. in the movie Trapped. That same year, Yul Brenner shot you to death in the original Westworld movie. What were you driving? I think I had a used uh, two-year-old... No! No, I had a brand-new Corvette. I walked into a Chevy dealer. I said, how much is that, including the tax and license? They said, 4400 bucks. And uh, I said, I'll take it. <laughs> I, I couldn't afford it, but it all worked out. You know, yeah. sometimes you take a chance or you make a move or you quit mm-hmm. and say, I'm finished with you guys and start a new business or life. Mm. I had very, very few times does it not work out better. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the year is 1985. Yeah. You play yourself playing P.W. Herman in the movie within a movie in Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Mm-hmm. What were you driving? I was driving, what What was it? A 85. Ni- 85. I was driving a Lincoln Continental with a fake convertible roof on it. In other words, they took the canvas and they glued it over the top, and it looked just like a convertible because they didn't make a convertible, and I wanted a convertible, <laughs> so I said, well, I'll fake it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I was driving. <laughs> okay, last one. Okay. The year is 2004. You win your fifth Emmy playing Ronald Reagan in the TV movie The Reagans. Mm-hmm. What were you driving? Uh, Porsche Cabriolet. Psst. Yeah. You're and a classy man. Been, <laughs> <laughs> I do love Porsches. I had one. <laughs> I, bu- I went in and I bought a two-year-old Porsche. Uh, pulled in, saw it as I drove by, and I went, hmm, boy, that's pretty. And uh, I had it for 11 years. I wouldn't give it up. So mm. I'm kind of a Porsche guy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, let's talk a little bit about life and peace. Can I tell you what I drive now? Oh, yes, of uh, course. A Raptor, the best vehicle oh, I've ever I just ever saw one of those in. at the Roosevelt Hotel the other day. Oh, you just that's need a second amazing. job to pay for the gas, so I feel embarrassed <laughs> about that. But I also have a Mini, which sort of evens it out. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. great.
Um, okay, let's talk about life in pieces. Mm -hmm. um, congratulations, another season Thank ahead you. of you. Mm -hmm. um, you get some good one-liners. I do. You do? I do, yeah. And sometimes, I must say, I'll read it. You know, when I read the pilot, I laughed the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I get my one-liners and I don't get them, and I have to go to the writers and say, what, is, <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> and, uh, okay, okay. And, you know, one, one thing about... We've got 11 really good actors on this show. Mm -hmm. So no matter whether they truly understand the genre of the comedy, they know how to make it work. They know how to make it their own. And to me, if something is funny to you, then it will be funny to the audience just because you're tickled. Yeah. So a lot of those one-liners, we just we kind of have to ring out a little bit, but mm -hmm. I do get the good ones. Yeah. What I like about the the family dynamics yeah. is it's it's almost like, you know, the saying opposites attract between a man and a woman, but mm -hmm. it's opposites attract in a family as well. Do you think, do you think a that way? Absolutely. And, and it's true at home, you know, with us. Yeah. I mean, my wife and I are very different, and that's what makes it work. Yeah. 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 Hey, got any tips out there for people with a... A glamorous wife who's more of a cowboy? Um, <laughs> the more you look for it, the less you'll find it. Uh, <laughs> just when you're not looking for love anymore and have no time for it, that's when it's going to tap you on the shoulder. Oh, nice. <laughs> Very nice. Um, so uh, another thing about life in pieces is that the family has a lot of brunches. Mm -hmm. Do you have any tips for surviving a family brunch? Boy, they're tedious. You know, table <laughs> scenes are tedious. And... Uh, uh, it's funny, I don't really identify with it so much because, um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of times we're more buffet style and yeah, everybody yeah. can kind of go their own way in, in my own life. To sit around that table and to have the camera uh, pop in between two people, because if you know about camera directions, it's real easy to have, let's say, I'm talking to you, but, but I'm looking over here. Mm -hmm. If you don't have the right camera, to, so every time you pop in around the, and every time you change the camera position, it's new lighting. Those are long days. Yeah. I, I got no answer for that. <laughs> <laughs> you bear with it. Um, so one of the things that you're known for now is uh, you're uh, directing uh, Hallmark movies. Mm -hmm. What are the essential ingredients to a good Hallmark movie? Oh, well, not that I'm married to those essentials, but a Hallmark movie um, has to have a lot of love and mm -hmm. kindness and almost from the first scene, everything's going all too well. Uh, the difference in me is I love to have, and, and I've had a few arguments with him, I love to have things not going well in the mm -hmm. beginning of a movie and then as you see them work I mean, that's, to me, that's what movies are really um, mostly useful, is mm -hmm. we learn to work out some of our own problems through watching films. Yeah. yeah. And so, as I say, I have to wrestle with them, and usually, mm -hmm. like, if you look at the two movies I did in the last two years for them, there's trouble in the beginning, and, um, and uh, there's love in the end, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I, I've got a theatrical I'm trying to get financing for now, oh. and uh, we've got three or four scripts in development, and who, who knows what's next, you know? Keeping yourself busy. Yeah, yeah. Between the series and then having four and a half or five months off, think, can we fit a movie in there and do post on it and everything? Yeah. Is, but... I'm quick. <laughs> James Brolin, thank you so much for being here today. Okay, and you, uh, good luck on your future adventures. Mm -hmm. we'll thank be, you. We'll be watching. Oh, boy. <laughs>